Well, hi there. I am Robert Font, a certified professional geologist uh, and an active member of the AIPG. Uh, some time ago, I had the opportunity to uh, visit the island of Martinique along the Eastern Caribbean and to see with my, my own eyes the infamous volcano Mount Pelé. As a point of interest, the unofficial flag of the island of Martinique is Le Drapeau au Serpent, which uh, depicts the snake Fer de Lance. Uh, the Fer de Lance is a poisonous snake, grows somewhere between four and nine feet in length, and it's a pit viper, uh, very dangerous. Uh, the bite of the fur de lance uh, delivers enough venom to kill between two and six people. The volcano Mount Pelé uh, results from plate subduction along the eastern boundary of the uh, Caribbean tectonic plate. Uh, this subduction zone has given rise to the Lesser Antilles Island Arc, which is a curved chain of volcanoes uh, extending approximately 530 miles uh, between Puerto Rico on the north and Venezuela on the south. At the subduction site, oceanic crust plunges beneath uh, the Caribbean tectonic plate. Uh, this eastern boundary contains uh, 17 active volcanoes, including, of course, Mount Pelé. The infamous eruption of Mount Pelé uh, dates to May 8, 1902. Uh, 29,000 people died during this eruption. What came out of this volcano was a Noue Ardente. This is an incandescent cloud of gas and ash at a temperature of about 1300 degrees Fahrenheit, moving very quickly. This Noé Ardente uh, engulfed the city of San Pierre and scorched and suffocated the inhabitants. What was really impressive to me was to realize that the city of San Pierre lies only four miles from this volcano. Uh, the eruption, by the way, took place on Ascension Day of the 29,000 people that died, as I told you before, uh, four people survived, but only two uh, within the uh, city of Saint Pierre itself. One of these was uh, Louis Auguste Cipari, a prisoner at the local dungeon. <laughs> so I guess you can say that in this particular case, crime did pay. And the other one was uh, Leon Compère Leandre who lived at the edge of the city. Both were badly burned. Dr. John Drovak, uh, in his textbook, The Last Volcano, actually narrates the account of a witness to the eruption. Uh, this witness was Captain Edward Freeman, commander of the steamship Rodham that was anchored in the bay when the eruption took place. Uh, Captain Freeman witnessed the black cloud of the Noue Ardente come out of the volcano, and within two minutes, it had engulfed the city of Saint Pierre. The Noue Ardente was more than a mile wide and a thousand feet high. Uh, this cloud of incandescent gas and ash uh, approached the Rodham at hurricane speed. Uh, Captain Freeman watched in horror, his crew uh, dying in agony, as well as hundreds of people running desperately along the shoreline, their bodies literally on fire. The heavy iron chain that held uh, the steamship uh, to a buoy snapped uh, and the vessel was set adrift. Uh, uh, Captain Freeman was very badly burnt and in tremendous pain, he managed to uh, steer the Rodham until it caught a current that allowed it uh, to drift into the island of St. Lucia. According to the account, when uh, Charles Dennehy, the British colonial surgeon uh, of St. Lucia, uh, asked Captain Freeman where he had come from, uh, the captain replied, from the gates of hell. 
Can you blame him? Geologically speaking, in addition to the pyroclastic debris and the ash beds related to Mount Pelé, uh, the volcanic rocks that compose the volcano are mainly andesites with dacites and the more mafic lithologies being secondary. Uh, the alkaline composition of the rocks of Mount Pelé have geochemical characteristics that are typical of island arc lithologies. Today, uh, Mount Pelé uh, looms over the city of San Pierre. I can tell you that when I left the island, I found myself saying a silent prayer, hoping that what happened in 1902 would never happen again. Well, that's it. See you later. Bye-bye.